factoring and more graphing still before we get into further into quadratics, okay, is what happens when, we'll just title it, when A is not 1. That's the title. Short, sweet, straight to the point, okay? So if I gave you something like, oh, I'm going to use this and create problems over here. Let's say I said x squared, okay, f of x equals 2x squared, let's go plus 2x subtract 4, okay? And let's just talk about the x-intercepts right now. How many of you feel comfortable finding the vertex with a negative b over 2a? Okay, good. Okay. But how many of you see an issue here with trying to set this equal to 0 and find the x-intercepts by factoring? Okay. If I go 2x squared plus 2x subtract 4 equals 0, you don't, pro most of you probably don't remember how to factor if the leading coefficient is not a 1. But, what I am going to tell you is this is something you should always look for. Look at this problem right now, those of you with any common sense whatsoever. Two. They all have a 2. Could I factor out a 2? Does 2 go into all yeah. of them? And if I factor it out of 2, and here's where it gets iffy, I'm going to take out of 2. So how do I do this? This is what I call the distributive property backwards. So if I had, just bear with me here, if I had 3x plus 6, well, let's start here. If I said 3 times x plus 2, all of you know how to do this times this is 3x, this times this is a positive 6, and I'm done, right? But what if I gave you this, and I wanted you to factor it? Well, you look at both terms, this term and this term, and you pick a number that goes into both of them, or it could be a letter also. But right now, it's just a number. I could take out a 3, right? So then you ask yourself, what do I multiply 3 by to get 3x? x. Isn't 3 times x 3x? Plus, what do I multiply 3 by to get 6? There, you just did the distributive property backwards. Isn't this the same thing as this? And you can do it with letters as well. What if I gave you 3x squared plus 6x? Pay attention, you two. Not only do they have a 3 in common, but what else do they have in common? So I could take out a 3x. 3x times what is 3x squared? x. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times what is 6x? 2. Okay. So we can use this to go over here. I took out a 2. 2 times what is 2x squared? Plus, 2 times what is 2x? 2 times what is a negative 4? Now, this is important. Okay? There's no variable out here. If there was a variable out there, that would be another story. Okay? And I'm going to show you, we're going to go back to this problem in just a second. But there's no variable out here, so I could just do what to get rid of it? Divide by, and then I do over here, I do what? And that would give me x squared plus x subtract 2 equals 0, which would factor to two numbers that multiply to give me this and add to give me this, a negative 2 and a positive 1, and then you could find your x-intercepts. Okay. Let's go to that problem I just gave you, though. If I gave you something like 3x squared, let's say I did this. 
f of x equals, I'll give you a different one. Let's go, I don't care, 5x squared subtract 15x. Okay, let's, let's throw a wrench into things a little bit. How many of you think this is still a quadratic? How many of you have no clue whether or not this is a quadratic or not? Okay, that means I did, my, I did a piss poor job of teaching that to you. Yes, that's on recording. That means I did a piss poor job of teaching this to you. You're right, it is a quadratic. Why is it a quadratic? Exponent, the biggest exponent is what? Is the biggest exponent still a 2? Yes. So is it a quadratic? Yes. Yeah, that hasn't changed any. Okay, do you have an A? Yes. What's my A? Five. What's my B? Negative 15. Negative 15. What's my C? Zero. And C is my y-intercept, which means it crosses the y-axis at zero. zero. Now think about this. Have some math common sense. If it crosses the y-axis at zero, not only is it my y-intercept, but it's also a x-intercept, correct? Now, let's prove this. You notice how I don't have, it's not a trinomial. All of these that I gave you, that's a trinomial. And we know how to factor portions of, at least some trinomials, right? Mm -hmm. This is not a trinomial. What is this? Okay, how do I factor this? You do the distributive property backwards. You just still factor it. It's just a different factoring technique. If I set this equal to zero, what do this and this have in common? So if I took out a 5x, 5x times what is 5x squared? 5x times what is 15x? Now, do you see how this has a variable on the outside? So we can't just divide by 5x and divide by 5x because there's a variable out there. Anytime there's a variable, you have to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to set 5x equal to 0, and I'm going to set x minus 3 equal to 0, and I'm going to divide by 5 and divide by 5, and guess what? 0, 0 is one of my x-intercepts, and I'm going to add 3 and add 3, so 3, 0 is my other x-intercept. Okay? You still have to find the vertex. Yeah, you still have to find the vertex. Either way, it doesn't matter. So either right now, you still have a b, right? So a negative b over 2a is my x, which would be a positive 15 over 2 times 5 which would be 15 over 10, which is 3 over 2. And then you're going to get some ugly number there. Okay. Okay, so right now, somewhere on your note cards, okay, we're going to start a checklist of factoring quadratics. Okay, we can do the distributive property backwards. And then we can do trinomials A with, oops, with A equals 1 with a not equal to 1. We've already talked about this. We've already done this. And now it's going to lead us to this, which is today. So as I, if I gave you 2x, well, come on, 2x squared plus 5x, Subtract 3. 
and I want you to factor that so you can find the x-intercepts. Do you understand that one of the main reasons of factoring is to find x-intercepts? Not the only reason, but one of the main reasons to factor is to find x-intercepts. Okay. How many of you remember how to do that from Mr. Haddock's class? Okay. Here we go. Step one, let's go. Let's go here. So you can rewrite your notes any way you want to, but I'm just going to put it underneath here and put step one, multiply A times C. Multiply A times C. Now, I should amend that. I should put a 0.5 up here. Bear with me. Okay, instead of step one, here's step one. If I call that step one, then my step 0.5, if possible, this is huge, do distributive property backwards. If you can, just like on this one back here, how much did it help by doing the distributive property backwards first? It helped a ton, right? It made life easier to factor. So if you can do the distributive property backwards, please do so. If not, then go to step one, which is multiply A times C. So when I look at this problem here, can I factor out a two? No. no. Well, I can, but I'd have fractions and you don't want to do that right now. That doesn't help me, okay? So if I can't factor, if I can't do the distributive property backwards, then I'm going to do A times C, which is what? Okay, step two, I need two numbers, okay, that multiply to give you A times C and add to give you B. I need two numbers to multiply to give me A times C. What was my A times C? What's my B? So two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 6 and add to give me 5. Negative 1 and a positive 6. Step 3. Substitute those two numbers for B. So now what does that give me? That gives me 2x squared. I'm going to take this out and put in these two numbers. So that would be a negative 1x plus 6x, right? I don't need that number anymore. And then I have my C, which is minus 3. Mm -hmm. Isn't this still the same thing as that? Yes. 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 The only reason we do that is so I can now group together. I'm going to go different color here so we can see. So I'm going to group this, these two together, and I'm going to group these two together. And look at the first group. They don't have a number in common, but what do they have in common? So I could take out an x. x times 2x is 2x squared minus x times what is 1x? 1. And this is the same thing as when doing it the long way with when a is 1, right? What do both of these have in common? A positive 3. If I take out a 3, 3 times 2x is 6x, minus 3 times 1 is 3. Now, is what I have in parentheses both the same? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Take him out. 2x minus 1 is in both of them. And what does that leave me with? X plus 3. And there you've just factored. I don't know how to write step 4, step 5, because you just right after you get to 3, then you're back to where we've always done, right? So it's however you want to write that. I don't know. Okay, but I am going to give you an exam, another one to do. I want you to do on your own. I'm going to give you... Let's go 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. See if you can factor that on your own. Okay, if, it, if you see the directions that just say factor, it's not asking you to graph, it's not asking you to find x-intercepts, it's just saying factor. So step one, step point five, can I take out a three? No. Okay, so step one, this times this is 24. Two numbers that multiply to give you 24, add to give you 14. 12 and 2. Step 2, whatever, substitute it in for B. So 3x squared plus 12x plus 2x plus 8. Does it matter in which order you put them in? No, you're going to get the same answer no matter what. Okay, next step, group. Look here, let's do a different color. What do these two have in common? They have a 3, but they also have an x. So 3x times x is 3x squared, 3x times 4. Then I look here, and they have a positive 2. That's important to put a positive 2, as I'm going to give you an exam a problem, which would be x plus 4. I'm not done yet. This isn't in factored form yet. What do they both have in common? An x plus 4, which would leave me with, this is my answer in factored form. Okay? And then you could set that equal to 0 if you're finding the x-intercepts. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you five or six questions for homework tonight that you can work on. Okay? I'm going to give you number one. I'm going to pause this as I create. Okay, these are the hardest one there, I promise you, is number three. Okay.